Hello, and welcome to my QTP video tutorial where I will show you how to add to the object repository from defining a new test object. In this video, we'll be covering the following topic. How to add an object to the object repository from defining a new test object. As a reminder, to stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. This moves us to the topic which asks the question, how to add an object to the object repository from defining a new test object. One of the functionalities offered in QTP is the ability to define a new test object from within the object repository window. This is useful if you would like to add an object into the object repository without being able to record yourself interacting with the application or clicking to add the object directly from either the object repository window or the object spa. I'll now flip over to QTP to show you an example of this. Now that we have the QTP window open, we need to open the object repository window. For more information on how to open the object repository window, feel free to watch one of my other videos where I go into more information on that. Now that we have the object repository window open, we now need to click to begin the process of defining a new test object. There are two different ways that you can access this functionality. They both end up at the same place so it does not make any difference as to which you use. It's just whichever one you're more comfortable with using. The first way to do that is by using the menu bar. The second way to do that is by using the button bar. I'll begin by showing you how to access this functionality by using the menu bar. So look near the top of the object repository window to find the menu bar. Once you see the menu bar, locate the object button. Once you find it, click it. Then locate the define new test object button. Now you could go ahead and click that button, but instead of clicking that now, what I'm going to do is click off of the menu bar so that I can show you how to access that same functionality from using the button bar. Now again, look near the top of the window to find the button bar. The button that you're looking for is a button that looks like a yellow asterisk. Once you find it, you can hover your mouse over it and you would see a tooltip that actually reads as Define New Test Object. Now again, you can click through either the menu bar or the button bar. They both end up at the same place. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the button bar since I'm currently hovered over that with my mouse. Once you click either of those methodologies, you'll then be presented with the Define New Test Object window. You'll see a few different inputs near the top of the window. There's an environment input, which is a drop down. The next input is the class input. It again is another drop down. Then the next input is the name input. Now we'll begin by looking at the environment input since it's the first one that we can select. When I click that drop down, I'm presented with three choices. The first is all, the second is standard windows, and the third is web. Now depending on the value that we pick here in the environment drop down, it could filter the results that we're able to see in the class input. Meaning, if we leave the selection as all, when we move down to the class input, it's going to show the different object types for all of the environments, for all the classes. Meaning it would show both web and standard Windows object types. However, if we were only looking to work with standard Windows objects, we could click to choose that, and then it would filter the set that we're able to see in the class input to objects that only pertain to standard Windows objects. However, if we're looking to work with web objects, we could choose web in this drop-down, and then it will filter the values that are in the class input to only be objects that relate to web. So let's say, for example, we were looking to work with web objects. What I could do is click to select web. Then again, it's going to filter the possible choices that I see in the class input drop-down based on what I chose in the environment input. So I can now click in the class drop-down box to see its choices. As you can see, some of the first few choices I see are browser, frame, image, and link. 
Those are some of the objects that specifically relate to web objects. Now I can choose any of the options that are here in this drop down, but let's say I wanted to add a browser object. I could click to select browser. We now move down to the name input. Now the name that you provide can be anything that you would like. It's just the name that QTP will use to reference this object. So let's say that I name this object new web object. Now that you've entered a name for your object, we now need to give it properties and property values so that QTP will be able to actually recognize the object that you're looking to create. To do this, we need to look down into the test object details section, which is about halfway down the window. Now to the right of the words test object details, you'll find two buttons. The first button is a green plus sign, and the second button is a red X. So click the green plus sign button to be able to actually add properties. Once you click that, you'll notice that you'll be brought to the Add Properties window. Now you have a couple of different options here. You can click to select a standard property out of the list here in the main part of the window. You can scroll up and down through the list to see the different options that QTP gives you. Or if you would like to create your own custom property, you can look to the top right corner of the window and locate the button that looks like a yellow asterisk. You could click it. You'll then be brought to the new property window. Once you're there, you'll see that there are two inputs. The first is property name, and the next is property value. So let's say you were looking to create a new property, and you wanted to call it new property. After you've finished typing in a value in the property name input, you could then click down into the property value input. Now you can type any value here at all that you would like, but let's just give it a value of 1, 2, 3. So once you've finished entering your custom property name and the value that you would like for QTP to use to actually identify that property name, you could click the OK button. You would now see that the custom property that you just created is now being shown in the main properties window. So you could either click to select that or you could click to select any other property that you would like. So I'll just click to select the new property that we created. Once you've selected the property that you would like for QTP to use to identify your object, you can locate the OK button at the bottom of the window. Once you find it, you can click it. And you'll see that back here in the Define New Test Object window, in the Test Object Details section, and then underneath the Description Properties header, You'll see the new property, property, and its value of 123. Now you could repeat those steps over and over again to add multiple properties that you would like for QTP to use to identify your object. However, if you would like to actually delete one of the properties, you could just click to select it and then click the red X button. This will actually delete the object. So I'll go ahead and show you that now. You'll notice that after I click the button, the uh, new property, custom property that we created, is now gone. It's no longer present. So let's go back in and add a new, uh, new property, just so we can see how this functionality works. And I'll just click to select the width property, since it's the first one. Once I click it, I'll click the OK button. Once you get all the properties and property values the way that you like them, you can then move down to the bottom of the window and locate the Add button. Once you find it, click it. Now once the Add button becomes disabled, that means that the object has been added to the object repository. You can now click the Close button, which is right beside the Add button, and this will close the Define New Test Object window. Now that the Define New Test Object window has gone away and we're brought back to QTP, We'll see that the new web object, object that we had created is here along the left hand side of the window underneath the test object section. Once you click to select that, we can look over along the right hand side of the window. Uh, for example, in the object properties section, we can see that the name of the object is new web object. It's of type browser. 
and it's in the local repository. Inside the test object details section, let's look to find the description properties header. Once you find that, you can see that here is the width property that we had clicked to help define our new object. So that means that we were able to successfully select a new property and then a value that we would like for QTP to use to actually recognize our new test object. This now concludes our video where I have shown you how to add an object to the object repository from defining a new test object. As a reminder, to stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. Thank you and I hope that you have a great day.